Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. So I'm going to continue on the subtopic natural rubber still di bawah topik polimer. This uh, another subtopic is about vulcanization. Before this we discuss about the concept of coagulation yang melibatkan uh, penggunaan coagulant and non coagulant. Coagulant is substance that will make the coagulation occur. Non coagulant is substance to prevent coagulation. That is the idea in our previous lesson. So for today we focus on vulcanization. So before we go what is vulcanization, we look at on the characteristic of natural rubber first. So natural rubber the characteristic is actually um depend on the rubber polymer itself that are natural elastomeric polymers okay it depends on the rubber polymer meaning that if we are talking about natural rubber kita akan fokus pada bahagian yang sebenarnya yang akan mempengaruhi the characteristic is on the rubber molecule yang berada di dalam uh, negatively protein membrane that's one yang kita akan fokus what we have there kita akan jumpa the presence of double bond kita ada satu double bond in the rubber molecules okay that is this structure of carbon carbon double bond will affect the resistance of natural rubber towards oxidation by air so as we know the presence of carbon carbon double bond ini adalah bahagian yang a little bit weak bahagian yang lemah so it is will easily oxidize by the air that's why um in rubber estate okay if you go to the rubber estate so you're going to smell uh, bau yang agak busuk because the rubber molecules is oxidized by the air part mana yang lemah tu so dia akan berlaku at this area the carbon carbon double bond so because of this the presence of this carbon carbon double bond so we have this characteristic number one soft soft white solid at room temperature so how can you imagine it's not you pegang duh uh, tepung duh tu soft very soft and white in color and it is white solid elastic it can be stretched you boleh tarik and then uh, bila you lepaskan it can return to its original shape when you release low heat resistant the natural rubber at high temp temperature is will become soft and sticky okay dia kena di melekit electrical insulator is also characteristic of natural rubber cannot conduct electricity um, so it is good as electrical insulator okay so penebak haba yang sangat uh, penebak elektrik yang sangat bagus so kalau you nak menghalang elektrik from flow you can put the rubber easily oxidize it can react which part react at the double bond it will going to react and cause the rubber to be oxidized so ini akan menyebabkan dia bau yang agak busuk reactive to chemicals easily react with acid alkali and organic solvent waterproof it is water impermeable so if we look at to the characteristic the characteristic of natural rubber is we can say is um affect mostly by the presence of the carbon carbon double bond so bahagian ni yang akan berlaku reaction dengan acid with the alkali with the air okay so uh, with this characteristic so what we can say natural rubber um banyak kelemahan dia lah okay so we need to do something to treat um our natural rubber because as, as we know rubber ni banyak penggunaan dia so dalam keadaan dia yang macam ni uh, we cannot produce tires tire because it is not high uh, cannot um, resistant to temperature so kalau kita park kereta tengah panas nanti dia akan melt and then um, natural rubber itself kalau we directly we want to produce the glove is not suitable sebab nanti is going to oxidize so your your hand akan bau busuk and then you cannot have the shape macam rubber glove punya shape sebab dia soft so agak sukar so dia banyak kegunaan tapi we kita kena rawat dia dulu before we use the rubber uh, natural rubber 
so how to treat this is the process okay the process is known as vulcanization what is the vulcanization vulcanization is the process whereby we produce rubber that is more elastic lebih elastic and with better quality through the production of cross link between the rubber polymer chain this is how vulcanization is produced Okay, we form cross link rubber cross cross link between the rubber chain. Okay, so vulcanization by using sulfur is the main method used to produce vulcanized rubber from natural rubber. So how vulcanization uh, dihasilkan? We are using sulfur in vulcanization. Nonetheless, this vulcanization cannot be used for certain type of rubber. Okay, particularly the synthetic rubber. Synthetic rubber, vulcanization, we don't add the sulfur because dia tak ada carbon-carbon double bond for the synthetic rubber. Carbon-carbon double bond is present in natural rubber only. So, how can we treat our synthetic rubber? We have a few methods. Kita ada peroxide, we have irrid irradiation and metal oxide. Okay, so I already simplified to you. Vulcanization is the process to treat the rubber. We have two types of rubber. You need to check what type of rubber. Kalau rubber you adalah natural rubber. So you can have two method. Okay, kalau natural rubber, apa keistimewaan natural rubber? Natural rubber, it contain carbon-carbon um, double bond. Okay, synthetic rubber, there is no carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, so for natural rubber, untuk vulcanize dia, dia akan melibatkan sulfur. Sulfur. So how? We have two method. Either we heat the rubber with sulfur at 140 degrees Celsius using zinc oxide as catalyst. Kita panaskan natural rubber dengan sulfur. Or we just dip kita celup natural rubber in a solution that solution is disulfur dichloride in methyl benzene so the formula is disulfur dichloride is S2Cl2 in disulfur dichloride also contain sulfur so the idea vulcanization untuk natural rubber mesti ada sulfur for synthetic rubber because it didn't contain carbon carbon double bond so we don't use the uh, sulfur. So we akan kita akan pakai the other method, either metal oxide or pro metal or using peroxide or irradiation. Irradiation is involving the gamma rays. Okay, melibatkan gamma rays. So you can explore um, and surf by your own to get more information if you want to know more about irradiation and peroxide and also metal oxide. But the example, simple example I give here is the vulcanization for neoprene new what is neoprene neoprene is a synthetic rubber so bila kita sebut synthetic rubber it is uh, not from the rubber tree and it didn't contain carbon carbon double bond so how to treat this synthetic rubber we are using metal oxide such as magnesium oxide and zinc oxide so we still have the vulcanization process tapi dia berbeza mengikut the type of rubber so you can explore and get more information by scan through this uh, code or you can surf by your own from the internet. Okay, so we're going to focus on how vulcanization of natural rubber occur. Okay, so this is the rubber molecule. We have the repeating subunit of monomer here. This is one monomer and another one. We have two. Okay, and then the second layer of rubber. Okay, this one. So, um, jangan pelik eh. Why CH3 dia berbeza, kita boleh letak mana-mana. Atas bawah pun tak ada masalah. Still the same structure. Okay, so this is like two layers of a rubber molecule okay so this is our polyisoprene or our polymer of natural rubber 
okay so when i dip or i heat my polyisoprene ataupun nama lain dia natural rubber when we heat in sulfur or dip in disulfur dichloride so what happen we only focus on the double bond part pada bahagian double bond sulfur will be there okay so this is our carbon double bond carbon double bond break the double bond and then uh, you have the sulfur in between the first layer of the rubber molecule and the second layer so dia akan menghubungkan di antara layer yang pertama dan layer yang kedua so what happen uh, daripada dua lapisan rubber molecule yang berbeza dia menjadi satu lapisan yang attached together so this um, junction is known as the sulfur cross link Okay, we known as the sulfur cross link. So, apa yang sulfur cross link ni buat? So, when we try to stretch, bila kita tarik, the sulfur cross link, dia menghubungkan di antara the layers of the polymer. So, bila you tarik, this sulfur will pull back the rubber into its original position. Number one. And also, because the presence of this sulfur, uh, dia akan menyebabkan uh, tak bau busuk lah macam yang sebelum ni ok so the sulfur akan muncul di mana only area yang ada carbon-carbon double bond ok so this is how we produce vulcanized rubber in laboratory first we must have 25 cm cube of latex meaning that di dalam keadaan liquid ok so we already learn how to make sure dalam liquid form we just add the ammonia solution okay so in liquid form we add a few drop if ethanoic acid who is ethanoic acid is an acid so this is will make the coagulation occur so who is ethanoic acid dia adalah sejenis coagulant okay and then we stir and then pour the latex into white towel and spread using the glass root sebab kita nak buat dalam bentuk yang nipis Bukan menggumpal tebal dalam bentuk yang nipis keping macam tu. And then we cut the dry rubber into small pieces. Okay and then at the end lepas dia dah coagulate dalam bentuk yang kita nak. Dalam bentuk sekeping. Barulah kita dip into disulfur dichloride. This is the process of vulcanization. Okay to make rubber more elastic. Okay and we can test. Uh, which one is much more better? Is it true vulcanized rubber is more better or not? We can test this rubber. Okay. By put uh, dengan meletakkan beban. So kita boleh tengok lah yang mana yang kita bila kita letak beban. Dia stretch and then ukur berapa panjang stretch dia bila lepaskan beban. Tengok it's turn to original length ataupun tidak. Okay. So, uh, this is the difference between the characteristic of vulcanized rubber and unvulcanized rubber. So, bila sebut unvulcanized rubber, meaning that this is the original rubber before treatment. So, vulcanized more elastic, unvulcanized less hardness, vulcanized more hard, unvulcanized soft, uh, vulcanized more strength, unvulcanized low strength resistant to heat vulcanized is more resistant to heat unvulcanized is less resistant and to ox towards oxidation vulcanized rubber is more resistant susah nak berlaku oxidation whereby unvulcanized rubber easy to be oxidized so dia bau busuk so if we compare this characteristic so for sure kita akan memilih untuk menghasilkan vulcanized rubber because it is more power dari segi karakter dia Okay, so this is, uh, just recall the position of sulfur cross link. So whatever is you have to know the sulfur cross link mesti berlaku di antara carbon-carbon double bond between the first layer and the second layer. Okay, next moving on to the properties of vulcanized rubber. Why vulcanized rubber is more elastic? Because the strong sulfur cross link 
will prevent the rubber polymers from sliding when it is stretched and can return to its original shape when released. This is why the rub vulcanized rubber more elastic. Dia ada sulfur dekat tengah. So when you try to stretch, sulfur tu akan menarik semula um, the rubber polymer to its original shape and also prevent them from slide. So kalau kita ada original rubber, bila kita over stretch, over stretch, dia akan menyebabkan dia tak return back to its original shape sebab dia slide. Dia turun daripada layer jadi duduk bawah layer yang kedua. Macam itulah konsep slide. Tapi kalau we have the vulcanized rubber, it didn't slide sebab the presence of sulfur crosslink akan menghalang sliding itu berlaku. Bukan itu sahaja, dia akan membantu untuk return to its original shape when released. Resistant towards oxidation. Okay, how this happen? But when we have the formation of sulfur crosslink, okay, we're going to reduce the presence of double bond between the carbon atoms. So, meaning that it is harder to oxidize. Sebab oxidation berlaku pada bahagian double bond. Lagi sikit double bond, lagi kuranglah oxidation berlaku. Resistant towards heat. High heat energy is needed to break the linkage due to the formation of strong sulfur crosslink. So, sulfur crosslink is strong bond. So, because dia strong, uh, so kalau kita pakai natural rubber, kita sikit je heat, dia terus melt, dia terus jadi sticky. But for the natural rubber, because of the presence of sulfur crosslink tadi, sulfur tu is quite strong. So, we need more heat energy. So, bila more heat energy, high temperature lah yang boleh jadikan dia melt. Okay. So, tayar tak akan melt lah walaupun cuaca panas di luar sana. Kalau dibuat daripada vulcanized rubber. This is the different, the structure different. Vulcanized rubber and unvulcanized rubber. So, before stretching, nampak tak banyak beza. During stretching, dia akan menegang. Okay, so we have the sulfur in between here. So, bila kita release for over stretching eh. Kalau unvulcanized rubber yang over stretch, tarik kuat sangat. Bila kita release, dia akan panjang, memanjang daripada uh, is original. Okay. But for the vulcanized rubber, even though we over stretch, dia same before and after stretch. So, maksudnya dia tak ada beza lah. Kalau tengok gambar pun nampak jelas uh, how is described. Okay. So, that's all for today. So, hope you will go and look at to the end uh, to make you more understand about this. Please uh, watch the video about the process of vulcanization and also the process how to prove the characteristic between the vulcanized and unvulcanized rubber. Okay. So, thank you.